My name is Tanner Mack. I'm a lieutenant at Lehigh Acres Fire Control and Rescue District, which is in Southwest Florida in Lee County. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at our new Pierce Velocity Aerial. We're gonna take a look at some of the unique features that we did on it. A Little bit about our department. Uh, it covers 142 square miles. We run approximately 18,000 calls a year, servicing an area with a about 150,000 citizens. So the first thing we'll take a look at, we went with the Velocity cab. It's a 70 inch cab with a 10 inch raised roof. The reason for that was it gave us added space. Uh, in addition to running just fire rescue calls, we also provide advanced life support to our citizens. And we cover an area with a lot of wildland urban interface fires. Being an all hazards department, this allowed us to store extra equipment within the cab. So the first thing we'll look at is our front bumper. We went with the shortest front bumper design we could possibly do just to add to the cramp angle and turning radius of the truck so it can fit into tighter areas of our district. Um, we kept it to where we could still have a trash line on the front, having 150 foot of inch and three quarter that we could deploy off there. We have our Q mounted on the bumper and then we went with our bell mounted on the other side just for tradition purposes, keeping the bell with the fire apparatus as well as using it for parades. Some other unique things you'll see, we went with the uh, whale and light package and then the high-vis headlights. And another unique thing on the front here is we did the Pierce 111 mirrors just for safety purposes. Um, something a little bit more unique as far as the mirrors, you don't see them a lot on some of the other trucks around, but it gives us a better view of our front bumper as well as still using them as rear view and side mirrors. Coming up to the cab, we did the flip down steps. It was just easier and more natural ergonomics to get in and out of the cab. Um, less sprains, strains, getting in and out and in the dark or at night and in gear for our personnel. And then we'll open up our door here and take a look inside the cab. Looking at the driver's seat, um, we've got our siren controls. Aerial master, aerial PTO, something unique that we did put. When we get to the other side, we'll look, we have an AM FM radio. We put a cutout switch right there. So if the officer and a firefighter is outside of the cab, backing the apparatus up and that radio was on, the engineer can just hit that button and it cuts power to the AM FM radio so he doesn't have any noise or anything interfering with him trying to communicate while backing. Taking a look here in the back of the cab. So all the seats, we went with the Pierce Care Package, the vinyl seats, but we went to putting the air packs back in the cab. Uh, this cab will fit a total of six personnel with the two firefighters with air pack seats here, as well as additional flip down steps here in the back. And the flip down steps for ease getting in and out of the cab. We have our EMS compartments, storage of all our advanced life support equipment. And then we also have additional storage here over the doghouse for our ballistics protective equipment, more medical gear, fire gear, tools, lights, ticks. And then we have the mounting for our Firecom wireless headsets so that all the crew members can communicate with one another en route to calls. Coming to our pump panel, um, we did a fairly compact pump panel, but we have our Atkinson communication system that we have on the pedestal, the pump panel on the top of the bucket so everyone can communicate with one another. Uh, we did all of manual valves on this water's pump just so that way it seemed more reliable to us than doing all the electronic valves. This water's pump is a 2000 GPM water CSU pump. It's got the flame coated tungsten impellers which just help it give a longer life to the pump if it gets sandy or dirty, gritty water. Our current Pierce aerial that we operate out of is a Pierce Dash, it's a 2003. That's gonna now be our reserve aerial. Uh, we've gotten many years out of that truck, so we wanted the pump to be able to stay up with the life of the truck was our reason for going with that. We did the Pump Boss Pressure Governor and then the Trident Air Prime. Some other unique things we did here on our pump panel is we have both of our inch and three quarter cross lays, our pre-connect one and pre-connect two. It's capable of holding 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose. And then over here on the side, we did a dead lay, holds about 200 feet of two and a half or three inch hose that we can use as a supply line there. Then next to it we have, will be our booster reel, since we do cover a lot of wildland urban interface areas, also being able to use that for decon for our firefighters coming out or for hazmat washdowns, it was just more practical to add the booster reel up there that can hold 150 foot of one inch booster line. Now we've got our outriggers, 
So we've got two sets of uh, H-style jacks or outriggers coming off this truck with an overall 18-foot jack spread at full stance. It is capable of being short jacked as well. Up here, we have our cord reel. It's a 200-foot cord reel that we're going to use to power tools, electric fans, or other utility equipment on scenes of fires, uh, which runs off the 6-kilowatt generator that we have on the other side of the truck. Another unique thing that we did with our outriggers here is for the placement, we have cameras above all of our outriggers that we can see on our command zone inside the cab. So the engineer as he's pulling up can actually spot his outriggers before even getting out of the cab, making sure we get the truck in the right place on the first try and not delaying any time to rescuing victims with our aerial. All right, so next we're gonna be looking at all of our compartment doors. We did lap doors down the entire side of our truck. This gave us not only added compartment space on the inside, but it also gives us the option to mount tools and equipment here to the door. So just more overall space in our compartments. And in our engineer compartment, another unique thing that we added with this truck compared to some of our, our current trucks we have now is a toolbox. So a big pet peeve of mine and a lot of the other guys is, you know, having just a messy engineer's compartment. This allows us to organize everything and makes it quick and easy to find at three o'clock in the morning when you're on a call and you, you need an essential piece of equipment. So we have all these drawers here for plenty of space in that compartment. Top of our DEF fill, we have SCBA bottle holders going all the way around the truck uh, through all of our doors. But the next one we're gonna look at, we can hold up to 10 spare SCBA bottles to use for either our lift bags or for you know, swapping out bottles after fires. In this compartment, we just added a swing out tool board. Again, just to give us the option to mount tools and equipment on either side, and then plenty of ample space behind it to store additional equipment, um, as well as mounting stuff up here on top of our lap doors. This compartment is one of the ones that is different from the other SCBA compartments. This is where the engineer's air pack will go. As I said earlier, since we mount or have so much equipment inside the cab, whether it be our advanced life support, EMS equipment, other fire tools, ballistics protective equipment, didn't leave us a whole lot of room to mount our air pack. So Pierce has this very uh, innovative design where you're easily able to put the engineer's air pack there and it's still quickly accessible to the engineer getting out and ready to go to work on scene of a fire. There's more compartment space. Everything's pretty much the same throughout here, just different sizes with these lap doors. We did do pull-out shelves here just so we can mount extrication equipment and we can pull it out without having to bend over, twist your back to access that. You can get it easily. All right, so back here we have the access to our turntable. We just did steps on this one side. On the other side, we have compartments, uh, just again for added storage space, but simple pull-out step design with our inclinometers for a grade or a front to back angle. And then we did our man saver bars with red to kind of match the colors of the truck up top. Another unique thing we did uh, as far as our turntable is we did raise the pedestal three inches. It only increased the overall height of that truck up to 12 foot three but it also gave a better view for the engineer off the front with the bucket and then just gave us a little bit more space to work with. We have our turntable or pedestal controls as well as our lift cylinders and everything matching same color red as the truck with our gold leaf lettering for our department down the side. We have our marker lights here on the back. All of our deck lights are scene lighting. Aerial controls for the outriggers or jacks there. All right, so another unique thing we did on the back here, we've got our ladder tunnel going to our torque box. Uh, we did do our Honoring America's Bravest, remembering the 343 firefighters who paid the supreme sacrifice on September 11th, 2001. With this roll-up door, we did the Gore-Tight roll-up doors. So you'll notice up here, you don't have that big bulky roll-up right there. It gave us a little bit more space to work with for our ladders. Um, having a, a complement of 121 feet of ground ladders right here in this ladder tunnel alone. 
We also have ample space to hold up to seven different hooks or pike poles and tool accessories here in the back. Again, that 121 feet of ground ladders is not counting the additional roof ladder that we have up on our aerial uh, to use with our life kit for rescues and then a little giant up there A-frame that we can use as a utility ladder as well. We have our five inch aerial waterway. So if we want to use this as a true truck, we can. An engine company can pump it. And then another inclinometer that is used for our slope side to side angles. Our hose bed has the ability to hold up to 600 foot of five inch hose or a larger amount of three inch hose, whichever one we decide to pack on this truck once we put it in service. Instead of doing another ladder access up to the turntable, we did a smaller compartment here on the side so we can store decon buckets, water coolers. It just gives us more space again for holding tools and equipment. Uh, we didn't want to sacrifice any of that on the truck and Pierce helped us do that really well with the hose bed. We didn't have to give up any of that room to have the amount of hose that we have on here while still holding a, a very large amount of equipment. Coming down the side, we go back to our lap doors which everything over here, similar to what you saw on the other side for holding tools and equipment. This compartment over here, we do have our 120 volt uh, outlet plugs for charging equipment and different plug-in access points instead of having our 200 foot electric cord reel. And then we have access to our six kilowatt generator right here to the, to the right of that. All right, one thing I forgot to mention while we're looking at the pump on the other side, this is our ladder truck is a technically a quint type apparatus. So in addition to not only having its own pump, it also has a 500 gallon water tank, which was another nice benefit Pierce was able to, to design for us where we didn't have to sacrifice any room on our ladders, compartment space, hose, while still getting that maximum 500 gallon water tank, which we need in some of our areas that aren't serviced by hydrants. That little bit of extra water makes a significant this, uh, difference for us. <laughs> All right, so the last few things we'll touch on that we did unique with this truck is we did do the TAC-4 front suspension, which significantly improved our cramp angle. It, this truck had one of the best turning radiuses we've seen or tested, um, so we're really happy with that. Then also, we talked about the bell in the beginning. This is the lieutenant or officer seat, and we've got a rope right here for parades or a bell access, as well as our siren and radio controls and plenty of space up here for equipment on the dash. With our velocity, we did the Cummins X15 for our engine gave us just the added horsepower, the 600 horsepower motor, not because we really needed it for the weight of the truck, but more for all the equipment and everything in addition we've added to this. So thank you all for joining us, uh, taking a look at our truck and we look forward to having it in service soon in our district.